I don't, did you, I don't know, like, do you, there, she's out there. You're the Florida version of Sex in the City, JD. That's when I was smoking my cigar. <laughs> Don't be an asshole today. Hey, hey man, how you doing? I'm good. How are you? Oh, Nick Austin, I've missed you. I know. I've missed you too, Denise Warner. My God, it seems like forever that we get like in between. I know. We're too busy. You are one busy bastard. I'll give you that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? Uh, we're just waiting on JD. Once again, her air conditioner has gone out. Oh, no. I know. I know. And, you know, <laughs> I hate to say I told you so, but I, I gave her the name of a super reputable company, but she went with somebody else. And um, this is the third time, I think, that it's <laughs> it's gone out. And it's like, you know, blazes in Florida. So I can't even yeah. imagine. And plus she's in like a, a beachside condo, you know, where the sun is pounding in. So oh, gosh. <laughs> oh man, I got to tell you right now, though, this is the first time in probably a month that I do not have any fans on. And it was 72 all day today. Oh, wow. Oh, that's a nice day. Yeah, we bought one of those um, um, like single use beach grills, you know, and we had uh, we grilled burgers and stuff for dinner. So it was so nice just not to be sweating, you know, like I, yeah. I had my dryer. I had the windows open all day. I, I just can't tell you. And then next week it goes back up into the 80s for a couple of days. Like, Argh. and then that's, <laughs> I've looked at the monthly forecast and that that's it. We're at a cool 74, 72, 73, straight through until September, where it's even better. So we just have to get through this next week and it'll all be over. Yeah. Well, that's nice that, you know, the summer kind of ends a little bit early over there. Yeah, this was brutal. 102, it was two weeks ago. Like, never in my, <laughs> since I've been here, 102. And it was like freakish. Like all we did was, you know, we had every window blacked out. We had every fan on. We had one of those mini air conditioners, you know, it, down here we had one going upstairs and it still literally only kept the house at like 82. It was so awful. You know, I mean, like 20 degrees better than what was going on outside, but still like it was awful. I'm, I really, really, really hate summers here. It's just it's just brutal, you know, like I go, oh, I should just go home, you know, to Florida for the summers. And then I go, mm. <laughs> yeah, maybe not. <laughs> they have, I mean, they have air conditioning, so I can't, you know, it's, what are you going to do? <laughs> yeah. That's the thing that I have heard about European countries is that they don't have air conditioning. No. Like the, no, the houses States weren't, they used weren't to. built for it, you know, so there's no such thing as central air. I mean, so, you know, people are, were, you know, buying these stupid mini like mobile units and then you got to run this huge hot air exhaust out the window. So you have to have like the right kind of window. That's like, true. Like, sash window because they give you like the little slider thing that your hose attached to. So you can just pull your window down and none of the hot air comes in, but they never fit right. So there's yeah. always like a gap, you know, and hot air is blowing in and with the one upstairs we route out of a skylight so there's I mean the gaps are unbelievable so it's and you know it's upstairs and hot air rises so mm -hmm. it's just like it's ridiculous it's I've never really I, I you know it's gotten worse like every year since I've been here obviously climate change and global warming and everything you know that you think about is that like, people think is a big joke over here we're like it's not a joke no <laughs> a joke it's sickening but you know i mean it is what it is but you know like i i freak for the cats you know my big fluffy you know fat ass cats are 
you know, just literally like staying as low as they possibly can. And, and they're so lethargic and like Bruce spent pretty much four days in the downstairs bathroom because it's like the cool, you know, the coolest part of the house It's under the stairs. There's no windows. It's dark, Mm -hmm. you know? So that's, that's pretty much where he, I just brought like a bowl of water in there for him. Didn't even want him to come out to go get water, you know? So uh, yeah, it was, it was, it was pretty bad. Today was just gorgeous like it was just a welcomed change you just for a day you know and then like okay i'll get through next week but today was just like the best it was so good my window well, still open <laughs> yeah i see i'm glad that the day has been nice you know temperatures haven't been too bad no everything. i mean i was even able to do laundry i could run my tumble dryer and not be like oh my god it's making the house hot <laughs> Oh gosh, see, yeah, those that's what those do. It's amazing yeah. how much heat those things produce. Anything, anything in this house that produces heat was just absolutely not. No hair dryers, no using the oven, no using the stove. I bear I pretty much we ordered take take, you know, ordered food in. Mm-hmm. Um, because I just didn't even the air fryer was like, nope, nope, I feel heat coming off of this. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> it was just like. I mean, like literally we Velcroed um, like blackout blinds up against the windows and then pulled the regular blinds down. Like those are blackout blinds that are on my window right now. We still had like a a layer of blackout underneath those and the same thing in uh, upstairs. So it just looked like a dark cave, you know, like it was, (laughs) it was just brutal. But the good news was we caught up on so much TV because you're so tired you're I was as as lethargic as the cats you know like you don't want to do anything but just sit in front of the tv so we watched um the offer have you seen that um I've heard of it yeah it's um because it's a spinoff of another tv series right it uh, no I don't think so it was about the the making of the godfather oh okay yeah I've heard of it yeah so Miles Teller plays Al Ruddy who is the you know the producer of The Godfather and it's mm-hmm. all the the shit that went on behind the scenes with the mafia and Frank Sinatra wanting to close the movie down and Robert Evans was running Paramount back then and it was cast so good like it was absolutely amazing the guy from Grey's Anatomy that used to play Karev plays Marlon Brando in the movie oh wow and he's fantastic um and whoever they had uh playing james Kahn was great i forget who it was but they had so many well-named people uh, juno temple from um ted lasso uh, mm-hmm. played uh al ruddy's secretary betty and you know it's like after of course i'm watching it and it's like 10 episodes and it's really oh and the guy that played francis ford coppola was fantastic too and mario puzo it was just really interesting because like I was brought up with that movie, you know, most people's families sit them down to watch like Peter Rabbit and Wizard of Oz. My, my family was like, gotta watch The Godfather. So, <laughs> so I was like brought up on the, you know, with this movie. Um, so to, to watch it and uh, to learn all that was going on behind the scenes was really, really good. And then on yeah. top of that, we finished the whole series. My wife goes, I guess I have to watch The Godfather now. And I was like, She's never seen The Godfather. It's, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> so the next day we we watched uh, The Godfather and it was awesome to watch the movie after watching that series because mm-hmm. every scene that they were talking about and showing them shooting certain scenes and stuff, like then you watch the movie and you see that scene and why something was so important. And it was like, or why like, you know, Francis Ford Coppola wouldn't back down about having this person and that person, Al Pacino, and, and, you know, in certain scenes, and, and it was just, I, we, I just absolutely loved it, and um, we went, we binged something else, oh, I think, was it, uh, oh, yeah, we started watching the last season of Better Things. Oh, yeah, I've heard of that show, too. I love it, it's so good, it's so this was the the last season of it, like, they're not making any more, so it was even, even more, you know, like, oh, but I just, I I mean, I just think Pam Adlin is just fucking brilliant. You know, like there, every season there was something that you could relate to, even if you don't have kids, you know, like maybe as a kid, you can relate to that moment when you thought your mom was being an idiot or you, you know, or you thought your mom was being like, that's the thing is that it came full circle in season five and they appreciated 
her, you know, so much, so much more. And then Celia Emery plays um, her mother in it. Mm. And, you know, she's like a British icon over here. And she was so fantastic in these last couple episodes. It was, it was just so good. And I think that it was loose. It is loosely based on her Pam Adlin's life. You know, mm. I'm pretty sure her mom is British and she's got three, you know, and I know, I think she has three daughters, but it's just also good. It's such a celebration of like weirdo kids and queer kids and like really expressive, you know, creative children that you don't know what to do with, but you see where they get it, you know? So um, I just, I absolutely loved it. I'm going to miss it so much. It was just really, really good. Really good. And then, like, told you, yeah. Oh, definitely. It's so binge worthy because they are, um, you know, quick episodes, like half hour episodes or whatever. So it goes by pretty quick. And then I told you we watched Uncoupled. Yeah. Yeah. Oh God, that was good. That was so good. I was, I really not expecting no, I shouldn't say I wasn't expecting to like it. I thought it was just going to be like a scroll your phone, have it on in the background kind of thing. But yeah. it was actually really, it was really good. I was just shocked. I should have known by the cast it was going to be good. You know? Oh, yeah. It's like Neil Patrick Harris at his best. And yes. It's because fantastic. there's a little bit of Barney in him, a tiny little bit, you know? Um, but it's, again, it's like that, that thing that you have when you watch Sex in the City, that celebration of New York, yes. you know, yeah. that, that New York that that you 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 don't really get to see unless you're unless you live there, I think. Because you know, if you're gonna go there, you're gonna go to Broadway, you're gonna see a show, you're gonna do all the tourist things, and you're gonna miss the tree-lined streets and the neighborhoods and the, you know, that that just that element of New York that you're, 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 you miss because you're too busy doing dumb things like buying hot dogs on the street and, you know, stuff like that. But yeah, it was, it was really well done. Like the story was really good too. You know, I felt that way too. Yeah. And, you know, living in New York city, you know, I had to dissociate a little bit from watching it because I miss New York so much that I like try and get over that and not watch a lot of like, New York City based content, but yeah, yeah. there's just something about how Darren Starr celebrates how he New York. Sees like you it. Were saying. Yeah. yeah. Like there I was, love that. I felt that whether I don't know, like like I said, like even the music, you know, just some of the yeah. segment of music or whatever. I was like, oh, this is so um this is so Darren Starr. By the way, Ooh, this what are you, Coke. yeah, what are you drinking? I'm so addicted right now to intergalactic coca-cola it tastes like coke that somebody put a poof of cotton candy in Ooh, i know that that's, good. it's weird to describe it here's jd it's weird to describe it that way and i did i've never really drank it in a glass so mm -hmm. i didn't even know that it was this weird color but i'm super into it Ooh. hey here she is how are you doing? Are you, are you sweaty? <laughs> I was the one without the air conditioning today, Denise. Oh, man, the guy was just know. here. He just left and it was working and it, it, he walks out the door. You know how many times I say I should have gone with arts, plumbing and air. I yeah. should have done that. Yeah. But you know, these people, they gave <laughs> me a deal and I'm going to put it out there all year cooling. Do, do not get involved with them. I don't care what price they give you. I'm saying it now. So call the arts. I'm just saying. Ooh. Call the arts. Calling art. I know. I know. Yeah. Hi, we're just, Nick. We're discussing our hey, drinks. Baby. I'm on to um, intergalactic Coca-Cola. Oh, wow. It looks I can't so even, pretty. I, I can't tell you where it's made because it's like a weird language. Mm -hmm. and I don't even know what language it is. I'm, I'm thinking uh. like some place Norwegian, you know, like Scandinavian. Yeah. But it's uh, like Coca-Cola that someone plucked off pink cotton candy and dropped it in and just let it fizz. Oh. In. Like <laughs> this color. <laughs> oh, that looks good. Did you that. mix it? Did you mix it with something? I didn't. Do you want to know something? I was waiting for you to come on before I made this announcement. I've not uh, had alcohol in about five weeks. 
Oh, oh wow. Yeah, good for you. I yeah. know. And not like I haven't like made an effort. I just because it's so hot, like you don't want to drink. Oh. Nothing yeah. to nothing to promote heat or sweat. So I haven't really had anything to drink. And I had a couple of really like bad days where I had like I my foot's been killing me. I was having like bad headaches and um uh-huh. floaters that were giving me headaches. And oh and yeah, stuff. yeah. But I can honestly say that today was the first day that nothing hurt. <laughs> I had no issue. Oh, and oh I, wow. It might have been like the fact that it was 72. <laughs> <laughs> but um uh, yeah so i'm gonna keep on this i'm gonna keep so, on this no drinking thing for a little while yeah and just see where we go with it you know <laughs> did because you feel like, like you were drinking too much is that no, why not you at all. no no it was not a conscious effort it was strictly because it was like the heat i think the last mm-hmm. time I drank was the, the Queen's Jubilee. Oh, that was it. Wow. I just had, like, a, just had like a can of cider. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that was like sometime in June. Right. And I think that was it because that's when it was just starting to, to get hot. And so mm-hmm. for the last month, it's just the temperature has been outrageous. And I was just not about doing anything that was going to make me even more sweaty. <laughs> Right, right. <laughs> I seriously can't have a glass of wine and then I, I break out. Like I, I get so sweaty after the first, you know, like when it's going in and it's like, <laughs> I'm processing, I get a little, <laughs> and then, and then you I feel can, the heat. Yeah. yeah. Then I can, I can bang them out after that, but I, <laughs> um, yeah, I'm just ma- making now that I feel good. It's like, I don't, I'm so afraid to do something that's going to make me like feel crappy. Yeah, yeah. I've been taking like CBD vitamins, gummies, um, and they they help. But today I didn't even take those, and I felt really really wow. I don't know. I think it was just the difference in temperature. Like the overnight, the temperatures just dropped, and they stay. It stayed super cool, (laughs) and it was fun to like grill on our little single. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Our single use grill. It's like this little grill that comes like in a tin foil pan with a grate and there's a bag <laughs> underneath it. And all you do is light the bag on fire and the charcoals take and everything. <laughs> and we made a couple of burgers out there and it was like the wind was blowing and it was just so nice to have the windows open and smell grill food. You know, Is that so, the, uh, the grill for one or the couple's grill? Is it for two people? Like you could it's do like a, a, they, a, kind of like a beach grill. Yeah. Like, oh, if, okay. if, you know what I mean? It's like this big. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> and it was just so easy and, and quick. And, you know, the thing of it is, is like, everybody goes, well, why don't you grill more often? Like in the summer, because if it's too hot to, to in your fucking house, it's too hot to step outside. Exactly. Right. 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 So yeah, that doesn't, that doesn't <laughs> me. So um, yeah. So this was the first time that we've actually grilled and I know that it's going to get warm again next week, but we had today. <laughs> I sound like so woo woo. We had today and it was gorgeous and then it was open <laughs> and the house is at like 72 and everybody's happy. We're all going to be able to sleep okay. Um, and then another week and then it's done. That's amazing. So summer will be over. Yeah. yeah. It's, it was, today was absolutely perfect. And we watched, um, what did we, we just, um, oh yeah, we also binged on pretty much all the drag, drag was just, telling uh <laughs> when it's this hot all you can do is just sit and watch tv with a face, yeah, yeah. face you know um but we also watched the the finale of drag race all stars oh okay did you see it because i don't want to say who won i know no, I I'm like, I'm keeping tight did, but you know who won right i do yeah i've okay. seen that <laughs> Deserve it, deservedly so but i just loved this entire season any mm-hmm. one of them could have won and I'd have been fine. Like any one of them. I have a new appreciation mm-hmm. for Raja. I absolutely adore the Vivian, which I always have. Um, mm-hmm. But every, maybe there, it was, there was no nastiness. There was no catty bullshit. Mm-hmm. Um, everything from Snatch Game to, you know, the runway looks and everything was just so yeah. elevated. Like everybody was at the top of their game and it was <laughs> it was so 
every episode, I looked forward to every episode. I was so sad that this season's over. I, I probably won't even watch it again because I want to end oh. on a high note. <laughs> I know. I really like the twist, the twist where nobody <laughs> went home week to week. You know, it was nice. Nobody because, went home. Yeah, I think that really helped. Like badges, yes. Yeah. yeah, that was that was amazing. You got to see everybody every episode. Maybe that's what it was that you got to see everybody every episode. Yeah, it's like everybody, it was like their victory lap. You know, it's like nobody had that's to worry so about going home or having to, you know, go up against somebody and then send somebody Or say home. who you want to leave. I hate yeah. mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, Right, gosh, right, yeah. right. And you know what's really nuts is to watch like that show and see those drag queens performing at the top of their game and how fantastic their outfits were and their creativity and their personality shining through. Then go watch a little Drag Race Canada. <laughs> oh gosh, why? Oh, <laughs> yeah. That begs the question. Let why? me tell you something. I haven't worn makeup since like 2019 <laughs> and I look better. <laughs> I'm just like, I cannot oh, believe how bad they're so bad, so bad. And then we were watching uh, the one from Down Under, the new season of Down Under in Australia again. Oh my god, bad! It's it's. I'm surprised you can barely like you can barely get through it. Like I don't. It's like I don't. I can't watch it without going. What is happening? <laughs> Are they for real? Like, is this the look they're going with for real? Is this it? Is this how they're going to wear their makeup? Like, <laughs> yeah. So comparing all the other seasons to that season of All Stars, mm. it's ruined it for me. I don't even want to watch. I don't want to finish the Canadian one. I just don't. <laughs> There's nobody worthy spoiled. of my time. <laughs> <laughs> nobody worthy of my time. <laughs> but yeah, we've been on like, massive a massive tv bender so we finished better things we finished uncoupled i finished sweet magnolias i finished um virgin river like all the soapy netflix shows yeah i yeah i, yeah, I finished those the drama series yeah 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 so i'm it's like now i'm at that point where i got nothing i got <laughs> nothing watch see if you could watch if you get the split. I think I told you about that. A yeah, couple you of told me about that. A couple of other people have mentioned yeah. that. Too. I, I don't, I, we've looked for it and maybe we just, maybe we need to look on iPlayer because we've yeah, searched see if all you the other find things. it. Yeah. I if think, it's a British um, series, it might be on iPlayer. Nicola Walker, I think her name is. Is that she's supposed to be like a British, maybe I got the last name wrong. The one of the main people. I think she's in a lot of British shows. It's not ringing a bell, but yeah, I think I have to probably have to search um, the BBC iPlayer. We did watch 10% on Amazon. That was really good. A British Mm -hmm. British series about a talent agency, loosely Mm -hmm. based on Call My Agent, I think. Uh Uh-huh. The British version of that. Um, And that that was really good. But yeah, we're just like banging out series like so hard. (laughs) It's like god and we're up to date on only murders in the building and now we got to wait each week <laughs> i hate that we went clean through the first season and now the <laughs> season, we're up to like the seventh episode so we're almost done but yeah I, it's the waiting like you just want to keep plugging away like i didn't want mm-hmm. other things to end because it was like that <laughs> um but yeah now we're done with that and we and right now um the commonwealth games are on here it's like it's like the low end version of the Olympics, but it's just for Commonwealth countries. Mm-hmm. Um, it's on day and fucking night, day and night. Like I can't. And we just finished the Euro Cup. Um, that was fun. We watched it like kind of from the quarterfinals, semifinals, and then watched the England Germany game. Woo-hoo! Like that was amazing. Um, it's like. It's still, it's like it, we won and it's still going on. Like mm-hmm. the memes are flying like crazy. The headlines are still like, you know, look what the lionesses have done for, <laughs> for football. And, you know, 66 years since um, England, men or women, 
have won a cup, you know, have won uh, the Euro Cup. So, you know, their slogan is it's coming home, you know, so every mm-hmm. year it's coming home, it's coming home. And women are just like, you know what? We got this. <laughs> we'll bring it home. We'll cook, we'll clean, we'll mind the kids and we'll bring it home. So <laughs> it's just cracking me up. It was such a good game though, like overtime and everything, but not a penalty shootout which I feel like is just a game of luck. So I was really happy it didn't come to, if you, you know, like, oh, so your goalie jumped the right way. Who wants to end it like that, you know? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. we didn't go into overtime. We didn't go into penalty kicks, but and we won. And it was, it was a moment, man. Like we were jumping around like animals. It was just <laughs> great. And you knew the whole, they had like 17 million people watching that game. Wow. That's wow. more than like- wow. The oh, Adele God. concert. <laughs> it was more than the more Adele than one concert. Adele concert. <laughs> yeah, but it was again like you know uniting the nation. <laughs> you know, leave it to the women to unite the nation. Uh, so yeah, that was like a great Sunday afternoon. It was just it was fantastic. So yeah, like we've just been literally sitting in front of the freaking TV. That's it. That's it. I don't. So, what do you have for us today, Nick? You got something big for us? Did I miss it? Yeah, what am I watching? So, this is my recommendation for some movies to watch. Okay, Okay, good. We're at that stage. We watched The Lost City tonight. Oh, Oh. what did you think of The Lost City? I, I thought it was funny. Like, first of all, like this story is absolute shit, you know, <laughs> but Sandra Bullock and Channing Tatum together. <laughs> so funny. And that brief appearance by Brad Pitt. <laughs> what? Was he even, was he even billed? You know, like, I didn't know. I'm like <laughs> watching it and I'd look at Gemma and I'm like, is that Brad Pitt? And she goes, <laughs> I think it I is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, he made a brief appearance. So funny. So, so funny. <laughs> yeah, it was. Funny. They're a good combo together. Yeah, and you know, he has a new movie coming out called Bullet Train, and it's coming out this weekend. Yes. And Sandra Bullock makes a brief appearance in that movie. Oh, hey, are you kidding me? Yeah. So that's yeah. Funny. And you have to wait for the credits, and then he's in it again at the very end. Which <laughs> oh, I, like, I, I like a little that. Yeah, yeah, very, very oh. end after all the credits. Um, but yeah, that was. Uh, I'm gonna now. I'm gonna have to watch Bullet Train. I did see him doing some press for it, though. Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> Yeah. Well, if you're looking for queer entertainment, some queer movies, um, there is a new movie coming out on Peacock for anyone who has access to Peacock. Yes, mm-hmm. it's called <laughs> They, Them, and it's about a gay conversion oh. therapy camp. Kevin Bacon? Yeah, with Kevin Bacon. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I haven't heard of that. Yeah, but it's, it's scary, isn't it? Really like a little, good. Yeah. a little scary and deep? Okay. Yeah, it starts out as this like gay conversion therapy camp storyline, and then it turns into a slasher. Ooh, that's a twist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and yet another reason not to send your kids to gay conversion. Right? Therapy. I know. Something yeah. about camp, right? As soon as they get in the woods, the cabin in the woods, the, the vacation on the lake, it's never good. For I did see some press room. photos, and I got that feeling. Like, oh, yeah. like a remote place where, yeah. Yeah, I don't know if that's if that's up my alley. I'm not. A, I don't watch anything with blood, gore, horror. Just <laughs> you know, suspense. I can kind of handle, but that's pretty much my limit. <laughs> no horror. I don't watching a movie like this. But I don't want to <laughs> right, the white knuckle viewer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, so. you won't like my other movie suggestion then, because oh, no. it's another horror movie. Of course, I like horror. Well, okay. Is it, funny girl, is it Funny Girl with Leah Michelle? <laughs> oh my gosh. Honestly, though. Yeah, Leah Michelle taking over for Beanie Feldstein. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. It, it doesn't it feel weird just saying that sentence out loud? It does. 
you know, it's her dream come true. You know, I've watched Glee. I watched Glee since the beginning and I've been waiting for this moment. I've been waiting for Lee <laughs> Michelle's funny girl moment. <laughs> After all the things I've read and heard, you know, about her as a person, I, I it's hard to support a project, you know? I know. She yeah. sounds horrible. Just everything yes. people have said about working with yeah. her, how she's yeah. made that's just completely. She kind of know. turned into her character a little bit, didn't she? She did, yeah. 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 Like a diva attitude kind of thing. Yeah. Is that what they yeah. say? Yeah. Oh, way worse. Like she's worse. bullied people on set. It's oh, bad. yeah. Yeah, with a little hint of racism, you know. Yeah, yeah, just <laughs> just like a little bullying is not bad enough. <laughs> yeah, Race let's layer this. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. So yeah, I don't know. I I'm such a Beanie uh, Beanie Feldstein fan since Booksmart. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. so I uh, yeah I, I'm Team Beanie. I wouldn't even and what and and Jane Lynch at the same time. <laughs> I know. Whew. It's so oh. funny because she she's leaving right before Liam and Michelle starts. Yes. And they <laughs> worked together on Glee for so many years. So if she is leaving, and she had to even come out and say she had nothing against Liam and Michelle. It was yes. just scheduling. <laughs> she already had planned to go. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. the timing, <laughs> a little on the nose. I know it's a little obvious, honestly. Yeah. It's not exactly. fooling anybody. Yeah, really not. <laughs> Put out all the press statements you want, but <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no. So I'm not going to watch your horror movies, but thank you. <laughs> well, yeah, for no. Jay. Yeah, no. Okay. Jay, will you watch a horror movie? I like horror movies. Yeah. Okay, there you go. I like horror movies when they're scarier than my life, which is usually, you know, when life gets scary, the horror movies are an escape because it's got to be scarier <laughs> than what's going on. <laughs> so what do you have what do you have <laughs> Ooh, okay so there's another horror movie coming out in theaters it's called bodies 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 mm -hmm. and nothing. it's about these like gen z like some of them are queer and they meet up for this like party at this huge mansion and then it turns mm -hmm. into a slasher oh another yeah. thing so, another slasher <laughs> When groups of young people gather together, something happens. Usually, take them out. They're in a yeah. pension, <laughs> <They're having> start <laughs> stopping. That's awesome. But they That's could. Cool. But they could for being young, right? <laughs> That's right. Yeah. <laughs> what you get. They never see it coming. They never see it coming because they're always having such a good time. They just they're don't so stupid. <laughs> right? Because they're so stupid. <laughs> Speaking of stupid, Nick, can you clear up what the hell went on with the Emmy nominations this year? Oh, okay. So, <laughs> yeah, basically everybody who was voting watched the same like three shows. Yes. It's like everybody watched <laughs> Succession, everybody watched Ted Lasso, and everybody watched The White Lotus. Yep. Mm -hmm. Those were like the three big shows. Mm-hmm. I can't even tell you how stunned I was that Yellowstone. Oh yeah. What? Like yeah. What? I, I know I, a lot I of people were upset about that. Yeah, I I was. You were one of them. Yeah, <laughs> I couldn't. I just couldn't believe it. Like I'm like. Taylor Sheridan has like nine shows going at one time and not one of them got a nomination. When I think about what had to have gone in to make 1883, mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. you know, with the livestock, the cattle, the set dressing, the cinematography, and I'm leaving out the acting, which was the best part. But yeah. Those yeah. things, you know, and to not even like get a nod, I was stunned. I was stunned. Couldn't even. Yeah. Believe and Ted Lasso, like again, okay, like it's uh -huh. good, and they got accolades for the first, you know, season or so. But you know, give someone else a shot. God, <laughs> I know that's what always happens. It's always the same shows that I repeat, like year to yeah. year. And right. Like right. It's like Veep all over again. 
Yes. But that that I, I I absolutely am okay with because it was worthy of that reward. <laughs> but yeah, it felt like that was going on again. Like I just I just couldn't I couldn't wrap my head around it. Like there was so much good stuff out there. I couldn't, I mean, we just started watching Barry and we like flew through it. Mm -hmm. Like that show is so damn funny. Like is so, it? <laughs> what a twisted concept. Like a really? man comes home, takes a job as a hitman, and then decides he wants to become an actor. Yeah. <laughs> it's so twisted. I didn't know anything about that show. Who's in that show? Henry Winkler and Bill Hader. Um mm. Yeah, those are the two most notable oh. ones. Huh. I mean, a lot of familiar faces that you'll you'll recognize. Um, but yeah, like it's it's some it's some funny shit. Like there's some there's some good lines in it. But yeah, like I was just really, really stunned that um that it felt really pointed, you know, like everything mm -hmm. about the Emmys mm -hmm. felt really pointed in one direction and not fair at all. And again, better things. Like, I do not understand how that doesn't get everything, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. everything, the writing, the direction. It's just, it's so, it's like, uh, it, it's like, it's moving, but it's not in your face. Like you come away with it real subtly after, you know, it's mm -hmm. over with, you're like, hmm. <laughs> that was good. That was good. So yeah, there was, I was just really blown away by the choices this year. Well, yeah, it's like, you know, there's so many shows that, you know, we can spread the wealth when it comes to awarding so many of these great shows. Like we've reached the peak TV moment and we keep saying this year after year, but there are so many incredible shows that are out mm -hmm. there. And Do you so feel like they need a few more seen. categories? Yeah, they need to open up some more slots for people. Like mm -hmm. dramedy. <laughs> you know, some things are not an out and out. Dramedy, I like that. Right? I like that. Some things just aren't an out and out drama or an out and out comedy. It's just kind of like a crossover, you know? And yeah, did you did you both ever watch Orange is the New Black? Yeah. A little okay. bit. I, I really did enjoy all of it, it, but all of it. Well, remember when that show came out, it was a huge hit when it was billed as a comedy. Like yeah. it got all the awards, everybody was talking about it. Yes. And then right, they made right. these changes to like the rules mm -hmm. for the show. Right. Right. And because it's like over a half hour, it was classified as a drama instead. And then it just completely yeah. fell off everyone's radar. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you know, I, I watch a show, I think it's a Canadian show. Oh God, what's it called? I can't even remember what it's called, but Black Cindy stars in it. Uh-huh. And mm -hmm. she yeah. is so funny in it, playing a detective. Like really? a DNA agent. You know, it's very, it very much reminds me of um The Heat with Sandra Bullock and Melissa McCarthy. Oh, that's cool. You know, like she's paired with a really uptight partner who's like very by the book and you know, like comes across as having her shit together but really it, mm -hmm. it was a little bit of a hot mess and, and <laughs> you know like black cindy's black cindy and she's just freaking funny and everything she does um and I, I can't believe i can't remember what it's called hard something i don't know it's it's definitely a canadian show though it's filmed in i think it's filmed in montreal really really funny um yeah but you don't really like um oh god what's her name from that 70s show that was in orange is the new black why can't i think oh, of it? yeah oh. laura drop on yes 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 she I dropped off the map and is doing like you know had a baby and is now doing like right. cooking, cooking. Yeah. Yeah. That on yeah. Wow. yeah and the other one um taylor Schilling. haven't seen re really seen her in anything no you know they were all they're also talented and then they the are. writer that married uh, Pousset, right? They have a kid together yeah. now in real life. And they're neither one of them are doing anything. Danielle Brooks seems like she's doing more modeling than anything else. But they <laughs> yeah. are so talented. They stay in the business. But yeah, you know what? I think there's just only so many spots. So, yeah. you know, there's what people get. The, and then I notice like a lot of people 
in the, in the position of people that were stars in a show, they create their own projects. So they will yeah. be the executive producer and yeah. put together a show or something. And then they get other people's money, but they're putting their own money in it too yeah. to get it. So, yeah. Definitely a lot of that going on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the way like, to um, Yeah. Christina Applegate did that for... Um, Dead to me? Is that was what's the name of it? Dead, Dead to me, me because uh -huh. didn't Will Ferrell fell off like he didn't yes. want to anymore. Yeah. 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 But she started, you know, she was in it. And then you need, of course, a bunch of people to put money into it. And right. then when he pulled people out. But um, you know, almost everyone you'll see at the end, the one of the exec, even with L Word, the yeah. new L Word, every one of those women from the original one are executive producers. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I was, I was money. just uh uh, I'm looking forward to um, what is it next week, right? August 12th, League of Their Own on Amazon, the series. Oh, yes. Oh, the series? Oh, wow. I can't wait. So many of my favorite people, right? The, the chick from, um, oh my God, what was the big show? Broad City. Abby oh, yeah. Jackson. So she's yeah, happy written it. And yeah, and Nick Offerman from Parks and Rec is doing the coach. Rosie's in one episode I saw mm -hmm. playing a bartender. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, and then uh, the girl that was in Tim Allen's last show, Last Man Standing, in the first couple of seasons played the middle daughter, Molly Ephraim. Love her. She's mm -hmm. in it. So, like, all these good people are in it. Like, I'm so looking forward to it. I said to Gemma, we're going to have to binge that one too, because then. <laughs> She leaves for Australia the end of August, and I am not going to oh, watch like wow. half of it, you know? She's going oh. back again. Wow. Yeah, she's back again oh, for like yeah. a month. Yeah. Well, I stumbled upon a, a lesbian uh, love story drama documentary. Um, the uh, poet Elizabeth, oh, Elizabeth Bishop. She was a famous poet, like with Sylvia Plath and those people. There's, they said, there's five women among all the men of the greatest American poets, and she's one of the five. And uh, it was her story. And she died in like 1979 or 1981. So this was like in the 50s, like when she was, you know, young. And uh, I didn't expect it to be that kind of a movie because it wasn't built that way. But she. The whole thing was about her going to Brazil to uh, to get her like her like mojo back for her poetry because she just hit a writing block and then she felt like in Brazil she could be herself because they were much more accepting of gay people there. Really? So, um, Times but it's, it's very much the very yeah. much a uh, um, uh, a story a love story because she goes to stay with a friend. And uh, when she gets there, the friend has got a has this really successful Brazilian uh, wife, girlfriend who was an architect. But um, when she arrives there, she steals her away from the friend. And then the woman, the, the architect just falls in love with her. And she goes, well, we were just kind of like roommates anyway. And she goes, does Mary know that? You know, like, <laughs> she didn't know that. But <laughs> so there's that dynamic through the whole movie of the three women living on this property in Brazil. And if you ever want to watch it, it's called Reaching for the Moon. It's from 2014. Oh, not from 20 years ago. <laughs> Not from 2019 ago, enough, like when I'm scrolling. Yeah, yeah. It, but you know, it takes place in 1950. There's in the 50s, but there's no, um, there's no famous people <clears throat> that we would know of in it. So I think yeah. the Brazilian actress might be famous in Brazil. But anyway, if you guys want to, you know, I don't know if it'd be your jam, Nick, because it's a chick, uh, you know, love story. <laughs> oh, you're equal. You were the oh, one yeah. who told us about uh, about the the va lesbian vampire one that just got canceled. Oh right, I know. I know. It, it, one it, it, season. Oh my uh, god, that got so canceled. Frustrating. Oh wow. Yeah. yeah, I was bent when I saw that. A lot of uh, WLW as they hashtag them, um, <laughs> getting tanked. Back wow. Right. They didn't back give it a home. chance. No, I know. I know. That's why, like, my yeah. friends are making their own content. Like, you know, yeah. Jill, Jill and Lauren are making this movie called Under the Influencer, 
which is mm -hmm. really cutting edge because it's about an NFT artist, like a digital artist who mm -hmm. has a um, fan, you know, that's interested in buying like her art, but she's really like kind of obsessed with the artist. Uh -huh. And uh -huh. it gets like a little bit of a horror twist. Uh, yeah, it. yeah. But they they made this movie in like two weeks with 60 grand. Really? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's How why Katie, Katie that? was out there working on it. She was like a script supervisor. They had to call in so many favors. Like, con I, oh, Jill, man, I would every oh. time I looked at Jill's Facebook, it was like, if anybody knows anybody that's got folding chairs or, you know, catering company oh or, God. you know, that has a certain, you know, camera or whatever. I mean, they were a lot of people like donating time and energy and everything to get it made because you have, you end up having to, you know, like when we, when things are getting canceled and cut and your characters are getting killed off and, you know, Winona Earp is over with and uh, Batgirl is over with and, you know, like it, what happens they take like a, a, um a, a, a like a guy showrunner and that's the person that's that's responsible for like lesbian content or storyline and it takes it in mm -hmm. a different direction and it messes it up and they're trying to get the average male viewers attention you know when that's <laughs> not your target <laughs> it's not your target right right it right, right. Really crappy like the last season of um Batgirl or whatever it was was so bad I could barely watch it. Mm. And it where will that be so good? I mean, I know that first season was with Ruby Rose, and then when she left, I I thought the other girl was doing really really good, but somewhere in that last in that last season, it just got really bad. You yeah. know, and it's like you want to be supportive, but <laughs> you know, yeah. sometimes you can't even if you love the show. Yeah, you just you can't. Yeah. yeah. So, so where we're we back for that girl? I have to hop <laughs> off one second. I'll be right back. It's the air conditioner guy. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> oh no. Yes. So oh, you man. could be a famous rock star and still not get good service. Yeah, apparently. That reminds me. I started watching Pam and Tommy. Couldn't get through it. Oh yeah. You know, I did not like the way that the story was told. Yeah. Uh, okay, I'm back. They're on the way. This is the the day of Mercury must be in retrograde or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What did what did do you not like about it? Because I didn't like when the dick started talking. <laughs> that was just so. I'm out. I was like, I'm, a, I'm out. <laughs> I know. It's like I couldn't take it seriously. You know, like with the focus on Seth Rogen's character and. Um, I didn't, I just didn't like that they were giving him kind of like a sympathetic edit. And I really liked Lily James Me as too. Pamela Anderson, yeah. but I don't know. I just think that the way the story was handled, it should have focused more on her and, yeah. you know, what happened to her. And I think there was like one really good episode um, where she has to testify about what happened. Yeah. And that, was my, that was the clip that I saw that made me want to watch it. Yeah, yeah. And then I started watching it. And I'm like, I, I don't think I can get through this. And it wasn't, <laughs> and it wasn't like that at all. So much like them, though. Like, I was amazed. I know. Yeah, we're talking about Pam and Tommy, JD. Oh, like, I never, you know what? I never actually tuned in that. It keeps popping up on my uh, Hulu thing, yeah. you know, or something yeah. to watch. I just never, yeah. I'm uh, not too interested, yeah, in, in yeah. that for some reason. <laughs> I loved her since Mamma Mia too. Yeah. Like I had like a hardcore so crush. I would, watch, I would watch anything with her in it. <laughs> this was really bad. Yeah. yeah. There wasn't yeah, well, enough of her. Like, that's the problem. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad she got nominated for an Emmy. I thought she definitely deserved it. But mm -hmm. yeah, the show on a whole really just, bad yeah, yeah really bad okay go ahead what were you saying jay <laughs> oh uh no i was just saying that i didn't i was it a movie or was it a documentary was it was there people playing them or were they yeah them, was it a documentary with the real billy people? james and sebastian stan oh okay tommy okay. and uh and pam but it was the story more about the construction worker guy that stole the stole the video and 
released it. So oh, yeah. wow. <clears throat> it was just not um I don't know. Like I said, I couldn't get through it. <laughs> like I could sit through some shit, you know, but <laughs> not that. <laughs> really, really bad. But yeah, um there were some pretty interesting gay headlines this week. Uh, news. Which one's caught your eye? Um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> more more about how awful Ron DeSantis is. Like going oh, yeah. after that that uh, that club that does the drag queens reading storybooks for the kids. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Going after the club owners now. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I, I believe it or not, I haven't heard that about that. I don't watch the news a lot because it's really depressing. But do you know what we're getting a lot down here? Um, and I don't know why it's targeting the gay community. The monkeypox is. Oh, yeah. It, it's, yeah. It's yeah. And I, I'm not sure why, because women are getting it and it's not an STD. I, I don't know why they're saying, you know, they're targeting the gay men. Do you know why, Nick? Do you, do you know what much? Are you hearing much about it? in Colorado? Yeah. Um, so not in the state of Colorado specifically, but I have been keeping up to date with it. Mm -hmm. California, Florida, New York, and Texas. <laughs> I know that it was um, disproportionately affecting queer yeah. men. Yeah. So yeah. I think that's why the focus was on that specifically. But you're right. It doesn't. It's not an STI. It affects everybody the same. It's not mm -hmm. something that you know is specifically you know gay men are going to get. You know, there's people you know who are straight. There are women who are going to get right. it. Right. And it was finally declared a health emergency. You know, by the Biden administration. Yeah. And it was like, well, it's about time. You know. Yeah. Right. Right. Like, yeah, up to seven thousand cases at this point. So. Yeah. Our case numbers are actually going down. I just read. Um, oh, like good. Oh, really? That's yeah. good. Yeah. But still, like, I know um, uh, because I follow uh, Robert Boo, who's the CEO of the South Florida Pride Center, they um, were uh, doing back, they were a vaccination center. And so they had like so many slots available. But I was, yeah. I was watching the news thing about it saying that there's only one place that that makes the vaccination. And that's oh. kind of what the issue is. Like they can't have this massive rollout because there's only one place that makes the vaccination and everybody's trying to get their hands on it. So is it a, is it the smallpox vaccine? Like what is the vaccine that they have it already? Well, it's specifically for monkeypox. It is. Oh, yeah. so how do yeah. they have it already? I'm so soon when this because it's not a new. Oh, it's not new. new. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Wow. but you know, transmissibility. Like you could be a you know a straight woman that has like a cut on your hand, right? Yeah. And actually like touch somebody or something, you know, and get it that way, like an open wound. You know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. it's not about butt sex. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's one way of getting it. There's like uh, five different ways of getting it, but that's the one that they're going right. to on. So, well, there was a woman that had it that got, I saw on the news that got interviewed and she was kind of like saying, people need to know that women are getting it too. And that she's a cashier in a store and she thinks she got it from one of the people in her, you know, that came through the store. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, so she's like, why are they focusing on that? Because if they're disproportionately doing that, they're not paying enough attention to it. You know, it's not. Well, yeah, it like they're going with the more prominent group of people, you know, that are, right. that are you know, the, the transmissibility is high in that, in that right. healing and gay men, but you can't exclude everybody else. You know, That's exactly true. like my God, exactly. but yeah, you so know, I think the most important thing that people can do is look at their LGBT community centers and find out where vaccinations are available, at least, mm -hmm. you know, protect yourself for your, for your own good. Right. You, exactly. You there's a chance, you know, yeah, you got it. You just got to stay on top of these things because what happens, it becomes a pandemic, <laughs> you know, exactly. in the blink of an eye. <laughs> so yeah, in definitely. Eye yeah more so i like your hat nick yeah. you look very nice in that hat 
Thank you. Very cool. Were you it having a bad I hair day? My hair today. Yeah. I, I just colored mine. I'm like, oh my God, it looks so dark. <laughs> it looks great. I just colored it. So <laughs> like yeah, very, it. very good color. I like your cartoon. I was so excited to be part of the cartoon, the lesbian lounge. You. I told oh, you I would find a clip. Yeah, they're, they're really doing well. Like I put one up. Um uh what's today friday right uh i put one up on wednesday and it's already got like a thousand views wow that's nice. awesome you know but yeah my um director that's you know that's doing the animation um she said like let's go with the shorts the vertical shorts uh -huh. reels uh -huh. because they're so quick they're so easy you can tweet them uh -huh. you can put them on instagram you can put them on facebook Mm -hmm. You know, it's really, really easy. You can sit there doing it from your phone. You know, you yeah, don't have to yeah. go on your laptop and do all that stuff. Um, and, you know, just keep promoting them and everything with the, with the same hashtags. But I got to tell you, it is so much fun to go back and listen to old shows because <laughs> I literally have to listen. Our shows were two hours. <laughs> like, that's unheard of. <laughs> You know, that's even in a serial crime podcast isn't too hard. It was an eve it was an evening. You spent yeah, the evening. It was a guys, Wednesday yeah. night, right. And it was two hours. And so I go <laughs> back and I listen to these old shows and I gotta listen to two hours and find the one minute golden nugget. Uh, oh, I might wow. find like three of them in one show, three or four of them yeah. in one show. But that's what I'm listening for you know, because she wants to keep these under a minute if possible, Yeah. you know, yeah. Yeah. but I got to tell you Very some cool. of the funniest stuff, some of, some of the funniest stuff, just a quick, like off the cuff comment, remark, <laughs> you know, whatever, <laughs> is a under a minute. you know, like, so it's been really fun finding them and editing them down to uh -huh. what I know Linda needs, you know, to, uh, to make the cartoon. So yeah, it's been, it's, and it's funny because like, I'll start at like 11 AM, you know, like just start, put in a show, you know, put a couple of clips into audacity or whatever, and, you know, listen and listen, start whittling down the clips that I have or whatever, putting them together. And the next thing you know, I look at the clock and it's like five o'clock and I haven't done anything. <laughs> for hours. I'm like, oh my God, this is like consuming my whole day. <laughs> um, it's good because I can put the fan right on me, <laughs> sit at the laptop and, uh, and get that stuff done. But it has been so fun to, uh, to listen to all the oh, different yeah. uh, phone call. I, I got a, one, I have to figure out a way. Sometimes it's like when you whittle it down so short and, and there's no context with it, then it's not really funny. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But we had a phone call from Kate McKinnon that is absolutely hilarious that I wish I could I could get it you know I've, <laughs> I've sent Linda like a, a three minute a six minute you know a couple of uh, uh, ones like that that she's going to work on for the other parts that are not shorts or not reels you know so we have like three to five minute ones but they take so long like I'm learning so much about animation that every line has to be dropped into that character and because me and Donna are like this, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. isolating it and putting them uh, into our characters is really difficult. So imagine having to do that for a six minute, you know, it's yeah, right, really right. easy for a one minute, you know, thing. That part of it's easy, but especially when it's just me and Donna or, you know, someone on the phone. But um, yeah, to do like a, a three to five minute one is a lot of work. And I, yeah, mm -hmm. so so we are trying to figure out a way to um, to get some of those a little bit longer, but so worth it. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. It's yeah. Cool. Cool yeah, stuff. It really is. It's been really. You were weird. ahead of your time with that show. Again, again, always, Definitely. always. Yeah, we were making <laughs> podcasts before people even knew what they were. Right. Yeah, they didn't, was, know, yeah, they didn't they know, know if they had to download them onto their computer. You know, they were listening to them on a Wednesday night, going out live. We had spatial audio at that time and we were broadcasting from my apartment, but it was going all over the world. And we just, 
like didn't really take that in. Right, know? right. Because um, it was called internet radio at that time. It wasn't really we called on, podcast. Uh, right, right. We were on I don't think that was a word. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And it wasn't until like we would go out live on a Wednesday night and they would record it. But back then it took so long to mm-hmm. make it into, you know, into a file, you know, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. so on Sunday, the show would, would actually come out through the website. So if you missed Wednesday, you could catch it on Sundays, but yeah, it was, um, it was, it was high energy for two hours. Like if I had to do it that, was. fuck man, I don't, I don't have that in me anymore. <laughs> no, I absolutely don't. And like we always <laughs> filled it. There was never a lull. There was never like, <laughs> oh God, we don't have anything. I mean, I worked meticulously from Thursday night until right up until the show the following Wednesday on the stuff that we were going to talk about. <laughs> like sometimes Donna would have like three pages. I would send her like an email that would have everything broken down and when we were going to do this and when the phone call was coming in, what we were going to talk about, what our segments were. And it would just, you know, be papers and papers, but there was never, I used to fear running out, like running out of things to <laughs> hear or things to talk about. And you just, it doesn't happen. No. It just doesn't happen. Mm-hmm. You can definitely fill two hours with queer talk. Uh, oh. Much like me, my battery is going <laughs> dead. <laughs> Nothing's working in my life. Mercury in retrograde. I am so sorry, everybody. It's like the I'm most lesbian phrase there is. Is it? I didn't know. Is it, it really? most definitely is. It wasn't. Yes, they did have it in the original Queer as Folk when they were planning their wedding, when the two women were planning their wedding, and they, they got warned by the fortune teller at the at Babylon <laughs> that Mercury was in retrograde and they couldn't do their wedding. They shouldn't do their wedding that week. And then everything was going wrong. And they kept saying, We shouldn't have done it. We didn't yeah, listen. Like, it's a good thing you watch those 20 year old episodes. <laughs> <laughs> bring us up to speed there's nothing like you know, all these shows that jd's gonna watch 10 years from now yes <laughs> whatever you were talking about before nick 20 years from now i'll be 80 <laughs> and i'll be watching, listening oh, to oh, it jd here's your list here's your list better things okay. uncoupled what was the other one nick um what else was there? Was that it's Western possible. one, right? What was the Western? Oh, 1883 was it? and Yellowstone. Yeah, 1883. Yes, Yellowstone. Yeah. But yeah. So there's your, you got four. <laughs> you got <laughs> four to catch up on. Give the time capsule. Stay current. <laughs> <laughs> but what, uh, um, you, you're still doing the LGBT, you're still working for the LGBTQ media company. So you must see like, headlines all day long like news all day long yeah when I was covering like news I would get headlines constantly you know but it's like from just in general now. I mean not even yeah. some political news but you know like new shows new movies you know new parts for actors new like all that stuff has to come right through you doesn't it well um yeah whenever we report on it like but aren't you like overloaded with information? (laughs) Well, I like, I seek it out. Like every day I'm looking at, you know, casting news and stuff like that. And it's something that I love to pay attention to. So it doesn't feel as like, you know, unbearable to have to like consistently stay on top of it. Yeah, it's- It is though. It really, it really is. I, I mean, I love it. I, that's my Twitter feed though. Like every <laughs> headline that comes in, I'm, you know, it's, it's always something queer. I follow every gay news media outlet there is, you know, Good for you. So you're I right on the read, edge. I just read before we sat down, Melissa Etheridge got the COVID. Oh. Did. Yeah. Listen, in case I drop off, it's cause I don't know. I can't, I don't know where my cord is and I'm running out of juice. So in case I drop off, that's where I went. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and I just want to say one more thing. When the guy gets here, I got to tell him I'm freezing because now it won't shut off. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, there are worse oh, problems. I'll tell you. Go off the hearts plumbing in air. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. So <laughs> Melissa Etheridge, she yeah. got the COVID. Yeah, she had to cancel a couple of shows. Is oh. she doing that Melissa Etheridge Island, Etheridge Island yet, or did yeah. start? No, yet? that's that's out there. Twenty so years from now. Be, <laughs> <laughs> no, I think she'll be better by then. Let's hope. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. But mm. yeah, it's. Uh, I know my mom got the COVID. Poor oh. Marlene. Uh, Poor thing, and it brought on like an MS exacerbation. So, oh. how's she doing yeah. now? I didn't hear much from her today. Um, she's really looking forward to next week because she thinks that she'll feel better. But you know, uh, not even so much that it's the, it's not any of the COVID symptoms. I'm like, do you have a sore throat? You know, do you have this? Do you have, are you coughing? Yeah, yeah. No, it was none of that. It was the MS thing that made her so weak. Uh, and then she uh, fell because she was weak. So now she's scraped both elbows and both knees, and they're uh, blue and open wounds. And she was dragging herself across Berber carpet. Oh, and I'm like, I told you that was a bad idea back when you did it 20 <laughs> years ago. Berber is bad. But um, yeah, so she got rug burns on her knees. She banged oh. her elbows. So she was just, you know, so miserable. So and she hates having people have to take care of her. You know, my mm -hmm. stepdad was taking the mornings off so he could literally get her out of bed, get her situated on the couch, get her coffee, get her breakfast, all that kind of stuff. And then her, you know, aide would come over and then he would go to work. The aide would stay there all day. And then she, she would leave when he came home. So she had round the clock care. Wow. Uh, and we got her on did. that um, Paxlovid the same day. As uh -huh. soon as she tested, yeah. I'm like, all right, call your doctor right now. Tell me you want to get on that. So she got on that same day. Um, but, you know, like I said, it's not even the, the COVID symptoms that are bugging her. It's everything else. It takes yeah. her like two weeks to bounce back from like an MS mm -hmm. investigation. And yeah. Then, it's not even the same strength, you know, like she just loses a little bit each time. So mm -hmm. yeah, I feel really bad. She thinks she, she thinks it's the stupid casino. Oh, not <laughs> which casino. she did not own up to going to. Until she you didn't. Did she did it. <laughs> yeah. She was trying to think of, oh, I don't know where I could have got it. And I'm like, you didn't go to the casino on Monday? No, because we had the air conditioning guy because their air conditioning <laughs> guy. The air conditioning guy came over to work on the air conditioning unit. She, but he worked in the garage. I didn't even see him. So I'm like, okay. And then she was like, oh, wait, I did go to the casino on Saturday. That's it. Oh, That's it. did you? <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I do I feel, feel really, really bad. You know, like checking in, you know, on the phone is just not the same as being there. And you feel like no one can take care of your mom the way you can, you know? Exactly. Right. Right. Yeah. So yeah, that, it's been tough, but yeah, I did. I did see that Melissa Etheridge got the COVIDs. <laughs> so yeah, it's just, uh, we were what at the end of Lost City, like we were, there was something on there about 36 COVID-19 compliance people. Were wow. Done. 36. Wow. <laughs> unbelievable. Wow. Yeah. Oh my Ooh. God. They still got to do it. I mean, it's still, it's still happening. So they still have to do that. Like Jill, even Jill and Lauren making this tiny little movie, you know, on their little teeny budget had to have, uh, oh my God, Nick, I see your cat back there in the corner. Where, oh, can yeah. you, where can you see that movie? Where, where, where would they air that movie to me? Um, like I, I don't even know yet. I don't even know how, how they will be putting it out. Mm -hmm. Not quite sure. Might be like a demo. <laughs> That's interesting that you could do a movie for for that budget, that white little budget. It ain't easy. That's for I sure. mean, that's not that's a lot of money, but for movies, it's not a lot right. of money to movies, totally so. not. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's really not a lot. I would imagine they'll put it out like on a on a platform where you probably have to pay to watch. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, 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 yeah. But you know, uh, as always, the hope is take it to Sundance, <laughs> get distribution. <laughs> that's right. So. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, it sounds really, really good. So I really wish them luck with it. Katie yeah. is missing not working on the movie now that uh, she's back here in England. <laughs> so yeah, in, in case I get zapped off, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. In case I get zapped off, 
it's always such a pleasure, Nick, to see you, to have you on the show. I was very excited you, that you were on just, today. We have to figure oh, out a way to make yeah. this work so there's not so much. Yeah, I was so happy you were going to be on again, right? Did I say yay? <laughs> In my text yay. to you? Yay. Well, it's always great to see the two of you. So you were great energy. You know, you're just good energy. Well, thank you. Do you got any last minute um, stuff happening? Well, you know, it's funny that you mentioned that, like Batgirl, because there was going to be a Batgirl movie. That was going to be one of my headlines. Was about guys the here. Okay. Got to run. The guys here. Bye, Bye guys. Okay. Well, there she went. <laughs> she went. Why do you want her to move? <laughs> like, they like they her. <laughs> oh my god! It's like she did something wrong. Don't report. That's funny. Okay. <laughs> um, I saw that, and so they pulled that movie, right? Yeah, the brothers. Yeah. But also what I saw was they moved a lot of shit to HBO Max. And yeah. then I saw that, you know, Chip and Joanna from Magnolia, they launched this Magnolia network and now their yeah. show is going to HBO Max. And I'm like, what is happening? Like there is, was there, there was like a big shakeup or something. Yeah, there was a merger between Discovery Plus and HBO Max. Okay, that was it. They joined together. A merge. <laughs> and so now we're going to get all this Discovery Plus stuff like that on yeah, HBO Max. And garbage over here. I know, and they're getting rid of all the HBO shows and some HBO Max shows. Oh, no way, because that's where Barry studio. was. That That's right. That was... Barry, yeah, Barry. Yeah, that show yeah. was on HBO Max, right? Yeah, it's like if you don't have like HBO through a cable provider, then you can't watch some of the shows. Oh, I think Barry is still on there, but yeah, it would have to be. What there was another one I binged too. Oh, Life and Beth. With oh yeah, Hunter. that was really good. Really yeah, good. yeah, and then um, somebody somewhere. I think we had talked about that with Bridget Everett. Yeah. That was another good one because Murray Hill is like everywhere. Murray Hill was in Life and Beth and was also in Somebody Somewhere. And he's been a drag queen. Like they've been on the scene. Oh, oh look at the like sound asleep over here. Oh. <laughs> in a little ball. Cute kitty. On her tower by the door. Um, Murray Hill has been on the New York City scene forever like they've been doing like drag king work and uh -huh. possibly transitioned i don't even know at this point but i remember like 10 years ago 15 actually 15 years ago having him on our show Ooh. you know before anybody knew who he was and we were so enamored at the commitment to the character of this of murray hill like that's just that's murray hill like and now all these great movie parts coming like that is such perseverance like i'm so proud yeah. of them for sticking it out you know like working all those little cabaret clubs and you know honing uh his act and we worked with him too like one time he hosted um a drag a drag king show that we were judging back when uh -huh. we were in the lesbian lounge at the sea monster in fort lauderdale and so we actually got to to meet after having you know have, having him on the show but Ooh. to see um all these awesome parts that he's getting where he gets to to be himself you know like it's such a moment like there's so much good stuff out there you know that focuses on not so much like the queer people the trans people but the odd ones you know yeah like yeah. that other character like that whole little group in in somebody somewhere you know, and look at what was that other show? Work in progress. Yeah. With uh with Abby McEnany, is that her name? Yeah, yeah. So good. There's a lot of good, good, good projects out there. And when these stupid mergers happen, my fear is that they're gonna they're gonna go, they're gonna fall through the cracks. 
you know this is why people say to own physical media because you can't yeah. trust these streaming services right with things like this happen that we're going to be able to still have the same shows right it's so convoluted to find out where something is at i know it's ridiculous like, for us to find barry was <laughs> was a lot of work you know hmm. but we just now got paramount plus and we realized that Disney has a lot of Hulu shows. So yeah. going through Disney and now these Hulu shows are starting to pop up that we didn't have access to. We wouldn't have been able to watch Life and Beth, um, you know, and like Barry and somebody somewhere worth, I think Sky Comedy bought into a lot of HBO Max stuff because that's mm -hmm. where we watched the new Sex and the City um, was through that. So to, to, figure out where something is available is a chore in and of itself nowadays you it know it's like oh my god i can't keep up i cannot keep up i'm so glad that i'm not like like i have a very specific genre of of stuff that i'll watch you know like Ooh. queer basically queer comedy you know yeah. or, or you know well written drama like that kind of stuff you know so, you know, we're all familiar with Netflix and Amazon, but now, you know, Paramount, Disney, uh, Peacock, um, what were we just watching on Peacock? Girls 5 Eva. Oh, yeah, I love Holy Girls 5 Holy shit, <laughs> that was funny. That was good. The song it's, stuck in my head. I just said it. Now I'm going to be like, girls forever. <laughs> I know. Whenever I would watch it, because I watched it when it was airing their second season on Peacock, yeah. and I'd watch it every week, and I would just be humming that song like <laughs> every <laughs> Thursday. Yeah. Every Thursday I was humming that. And then the end songs were always like, you know, the songs that they were working on when they were in the studio, yeah. the whole song would come out and you'd listen to the words and be like, oh my God. <laughs> yeah, it was so twisted and so damn funny. Really yeah. good. I love Paula Pell with all my heart. Since Sisters. Yeah, I yeah. know. In that comedy, it scratches an itch that, you know, we haven't had comedy like that since like 30 Rock and stuff like that. Yeah, like the old days. Like like Scrub Schmidt. and Parks and Rec and Oh yeah. Oh man. Um, I also discovered Abbott Elementary and I love Oh, it's so Abbott. good. It is wow. so good. It is really, really good with that same thing, like you know, when they get to look right at the camera and make the faces and stuff like that, like yeah. the office and parks and rec. So I just I love that kind of stuff. So yeah, now we're starting to get all these because of you know paramount plus and disney but jesus christ when you add up everything that you pay for monthly it's so expensive oh my god yeah it's ridiculous and now There's i know so that like, sports is going to start coming to those oh yeah yeah that's going to be interesting that's going to be really interesting the nfl uh season is upon us you know the pre-games preseason mm. games have started so um, I don't really get to see those live because they come on at like 1 a.m. Mm. <laughs> so and by the time I wake up and have my coffee and scroll social media, I know all the scores. So it makes no sense for me to go, you know, record them and watch them because I'm going to, I know who won. So well, yeah, it's really difficult to keep, keep up with the NFL shit over here. Sucks. Yeah. But yeah, I'm like it's like it's a blessing and a curse. Like all these streaming services now, you know, you can watch literally anything, any given time. You know, you're paying out the ass too. Um, it's true. But yeah, to uh, you know, figure out where something is is going to be showing. <laughs> it's just so I have to Google everything. Everything yeah. I have to. I'm like, yeah. okay, it's that which streaming platform am I going to be able to watch this movie or TV show on? Yep. Yes. Like, oh, just have to go to Google. It's ridiculous that there's so many the streaming same services that you have to do that. And we always have to wait for something to finish, you know, over there before it, it you know, or at least debuts over there um, before we even get it. And then sometimes it's not on the same service, like our. You know, like I said, I think Sky Comedy bought into Peacock. So we were getting a couple of those things. And then they just launched like three more channels. So there's like Sky Witness and Sky Replay and Sky Comedy. And there's all these channels. 
but so much stuff is on them, you know, so it, it's, you just don't know where that's going to, that's going to pop up, you know, it's like, true. yeah, it's, it's definitely, you got to do your homework before watching TV now. I know. Who would have thought? Yeah, here we Something are. I was supposed to be like so escapist, you know, something for us to yeah. you know, just relax and watch. And there's all this stress around it. It's like, okay, it's where true. am I going to watch this? Where am I going to watch the next <laughs> thing? Oh, man. I, and now I get it. Like, I try and get, my mother does not watch television during the day. Like, mm-hmm. not at all. And I'm like, what do you, what do you and Nadine do? And she, do we just sit on our iPhones and our iPads and talk about show each other funny videos and pictures and stuff and i'm like oh my god <laughs> so much shit you could be watching but she's so terrified of like they got the big smart tv you know so oh, they yeah. have every single thing at their fingertips but she does not know how to use the remote control well yeah that, that that's a lot to adjust to <laughs> yeah so like now i get it because i'm i feel like i'm in the same boat if it's not on amazon or netflix it's a little bit of a struggle not gonna lie, it it's a little it bit is. of a struggle, but you know, it, 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 and then it, it's worth it, you know, like once you, you know, find something that you like. Um, but now, like, worrying about it is an added level of stress. It will is. there be another season? Will it get canceled? Will it get cut? Will it drop off? Will we know what happens? Like, it's just like so much stress. I know. Yeah. It's just okay. better to just wash your hands of it and do what your mom does and just <laughs> not watch it. <laughs> I know. Maybe I should start reading books again. <laughs> <laughs> or at least writing them. <laughs> Can't get yeah. I have all my notes, my story, my characters, my story, my locations, my settings, my arc, everything. And all I need to do is just like sit down and put it together. Yeah. I know it's the hardest thing. Yeah, I'm a little sidetracked with trying to find the right audio clips for the cartoons. So it's like these balancing these two things is is rough. And you know, once I find a show like like I had to watch all of Virgin River, had to watch all of Sweet Magnolias. So those three things are how I fill my day. Yeah. No, that's me. That's literally me too. So yeah, it's rough. That. It is. Oh, oh, my friend, I um, I can't wait to talk to you again. Yes. Uh, yeah, this was, J- JD's going to have to edit this into a nice little compilation. I know. It's going to be bookended with us just talking to each other. <laughs> <laughs> JD's going to randomly <laughs> pop up. We should really pop. just FaceTime. I mean, <laughs> seriously, why do we do this? <laughs> just I know. <laughs> but uh, look, it's I love having you on anytime. Every, any chance we get to have you on. When you can squeeze us in, I'm I'm so thrilled. Honestly, I know. Now I'm always hand. happy to get your call. <laughs> well, now that I know that you can do them, you know, like you do, you're down to one job, right? Yes, yes. I didn't, want, <laughs> I didn't want to burden you when you were struggling with two. So now that you're down to one, maybe we can work these in a little more regularly. Oh yeah, yeah. You? It should not be an issue. Excellent. Okay, my friend, enjoy your evening. It was lovely seeing your adorable face. Yes, too. Yes, you have a great evening. I'll see you soon. Right. Why do you always run back to the love? It's like, never stop chasing you your dreams. Know, <laughs> you're addicted to a touch. That's true. My addiction. And I confess. My addiction. My addiction is you. We drank way too much whiskey. Don't ask me why I'm here tonight. I had to take this midnight drive to find you. And as I come in through the door, I see her dancing on the floor beside you.
feels my 